Hello, my lovelies. Happy, happy Wednesday, although happy freezing cold Wednesday. I am still frozen. The storm has obviously hit Dennis Powers now because it is blowing a hoolie out there and rain and all sorts. It's not pleasant at all. In proper freezing. <laughs> I had the heating on and everything today, which uh, frankly is not on for the middle of April. <laughs> Where's my spring weather? Where's my, my, you know, slightly warm, you know, I don't get me wrong, hotter the better as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, I like the spring normally when you just start to feel that bit of warmth. But no, nope, definitely, definitely April showers galore today. So I've got a few little bits to go through before we start the block and everything. Um, I think my... Wi-Fi is a little bit slow today for some reason. I think it might be freezing a little bit. Um, say hello if you're there. Um, hello, my darling. So hi, Natalie. Hi, Lynn. Hello, lovelies. Uh, everybody from a windy Lincolnshire. I know it's. I'm so cold. I'm absolutely freezing, guys. Um, I've, I've, I've even had the heating on in the shop. <laughs> um, freezing in Bath too, Nikki. Yeah. Hi, Taryn. Hi, Nikki. Uh, hi, Caroline. Uh, quick visit because you're going gonna have to go out soon. I'm going out tomorrow night on a school night um, with Sarah and Sean. We're going to a, sorry, I've got hiccups, um, a pre-opening. Uh, Drew's got a new job and um, he's left the pool now and he's um, going to work in a new um, new bar that's just opened up. And um, we've got tickets to the pre-opening. So we're going for a few drinks and some free food. Yay. <laughs> um, hi, Sasha. Hello, lovely. Hi, Claire. Hi, Freddie. Hi, Janet. Hi, Mal uh, Melba. Hi, Mary. Sorry if I've missed anybody. Hopefully you're all coming online. Hi, Janet. Hi, hi also Janet. Hello, lovely. All the way from Dublin. Hello, my lovely. Is it freezing cold with you as well? Um, hi, Maria. Hi, Anne. Oh, yeah. Blustery bridge end. I know it's horrible, isn't it, today? Nasty, nasty, nasty. So I'm going to show you some new bits and then I'm going to do the challenge post because I remembered. <laughs> um, and then we're going to do um, we're going to do the we're going to do a block, but it's um, the new June Taylor stuff. So which has got some different elements to it. They've done sort of like an intermediary type thing rather than basic beginner stuff. So um, we are going to do that. So I'm going to show you those. Um, Taryn, it does sound good. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully it will be weather like this. Otherwise we're going to get very, very wet. Um, hi, Angela. Hello, lovely. Uh, hi, Fred. You've got lots of fresh snow by you. Oh, nice. I wouldn't mind if it was a bit of snow. We, had, we haven't had any proper snow at all this year. But um, no, it's just wet and horrible and nasty. Um, don't forget the challenge post. I won't forget the challenge post. I've got it all here ready. <laughs> I remembered. <laughs> uh, hi, Carol. Hello, my darlings. Right. So first things first, I'm going to nip over to the overhead and I'm going to show you these new bits that have just come in. Um, so we have got um, new junior jellies and junior layers in in onyx now we almost always have the white and cream ones in when we can get them but they're they're around most of the time but we don't often able to get the black ones and i i mean you guys buy onyx as quickly as we can get it into the shop frankly um and they're just really really useful so we've got the junior jelly rolls that all of this is already on the website and we've got the junior layer cake in the onyx grunge which is just a fantastic um I, I love grunge. It's really lovely. Nice to work with. I use and I use these a lot, particularly with other layer cakes, you know, not just the black ones, you know, the white and cream and everything as well. They're just really useful. Really, really useful. Good things to have in your stash. Those are on the layer, uh, on the website. Um, hi, Val. How are you, lovely? Um, and then I've got three new ranges. Now, I've, I've just brought the layer cakes over with me, but we've got them in charm packs and we've got them in jelly rolls as well. And there's three brand new ranges that have come in in the pre-cuts. This is Moda Beyond Bella new, okay? So they brought out a, a range of the Beyond Bellas last year, but these are all the new colors. So if you bought it last year, this will be different, but it's just gorgeous. It really is. It's it's gonna, like Sarah Jane's gonna go like loopy over this because it's a full on in your face rainbow, really in that beautiful Beyond Bella look, which, oh, look, I mean, look at that teal, it's just, gorgeous 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 um the purples you've got lilacs in there pinks through to the reds and it's got that lovely it's all bella solid colors so it will match in with all the right bella solids and if you look on the back here the order of the so this one here like the top one is this one here so if you want a particular color 
you can count down and then count through to this and this gives you the code number of whichever Bella solid you might want. So if you wanted a particular coordinate, you know, just their plain solids, these are the correct numbers for the solids that go with it. Okay, so that's really lovely. Again, got it in charm packs. No, we haven't, sorry. This is in a layer and a jelly. Okay, haven't got any charm packs in yet, this one. Uh, hi, Lindy Lou, how are you, my darling? Um, this is new in from Robin Pickens, and this is called Wild Blossoms. And this is, uh, I, I love a bit of Robin Pickens. She did like the pansy one and all that. Really, really beautiful. All these, I don't know if you can see, all those, can you see those beautiful irises and stuff? Um, all lovely, lovely wild flowers. Really, again, a bit of a rainbow going on. Beautiful mulberry colour in that. That Reds in there. Lovely, lovely colour range in there. Little bees on it. Stunning sort of wild flowers. I mean, that is just yummy. Really, really nice. Um, she's the lady that designs Thatched, which I know a lot of you like as your blender. You've got daisies in there. Little butterflies. All sorts going on really really pretty spring fresh that was called wild blossoms we've got charms jellies and layers in that and then my last one this is what i was using last night for the kaleidoscope um which is bliss and i've got i've got only four of these and four of the jellies in the bliss um and i think there's 12 of the charm packs but it's all those beautiful soft spring colors pastels which but you saw most of that last night so that's the newbie stuff. That's what I wanted to show you. They're all on the website. Um, some of them we've only got three or four of, so if you like them, go for it. But because I'm lovely, I'm going to give away one of the um, Wild Blossom charm packs for the Challenge Post winner, um, which is just, it's gorgeous. Really, really, I mean, just, how pretty is that? All those wildflowers with the little bees. You've got all sorts going on in there little bit of um, elderflower and everything. Really, really lovely. Love that as well. So, um, challenge post, we asked everybody to show us your Easter. It didn't have to be an Easter make. It could have been um, just what you were doing for Easter, your favourite Easter egg, what you know, anything at all. Um, and lots and lots of you um, put, a post, uh, put, put pictures up. So you're all in the bag. You're all under there. So I'm going to give it a good mess around and just pull out a winner. So let's have a little look. Move them around as much as I can, and then we're going to go. We're going to go. We're going to go there. Let's go to that right hand side for a change. So the winner of this little uh, charm pack is Grace Ash. Grace, my lovely, this one's coming your way. So congratulations. Um, it's just we love to see the pictures of what you make, and it's always nice for you guys to to show us what you're doing. And Grace is the lucky winner of that one. So. Right, what we're going to do today is we're going to do, um, we're going to have a, a little bit of go at June Taylor, which I know you guys have seen me do lots, but they've brought out these, these three different types of um, placemat that place, blah, 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 get my words out, placemats, <laughs> um, three different designs. Um, I'm taking them on to Crate and Craft next week, but we will have some in the shop as well. Um, there's three new designs. They are, instead of a set of six, they're a set of four, but they are a much bigger placemat. They used to be 16 by 12. They're now 19 by 14. So they're a really good size placemat and you get four in the pack. Um, but they've kind of upped the ante with them a little bit. You've got to do a bit of piecing before you apply it, which I thought is nicer for those of you who um, you may be uh, I've done like, do you know what? I can do Jean Taylor. It's easy peasy. And that's brilliant for that. But sometimes you want to do something a little bit different. You want something a little bit you know, newer. So this one's called Union Square. There's also one called Brighton Pier and one called Alberto. Um, but I wish I'm going to take, like I said, I've got those on Create and Craft. But I thought we'd have a little go at this one tonight. Um, I really like the fact as well that they have played around with these as well. So you can play around with your colours and they will look different depending on how you place your fabrics. So you might be able to see a little bit easier on this little black and white one that they've done. So as usual, beautiful instructions in there. You've got, tells you exactly what your pieces are and everything, exactly how to do everything. But they've given you these little ideas here about how to place your fabrics. So 
you don't have to do this extra element of piecing before you put it on it will tell you so the, the extra elements are pieces um, six seven eight and nine which are the outside bits you can if you want to just make them into full squares which it tells you here it tells you here if you want to you can just do that for six to nine or if you want to play around and do the piecing you can but again how you do the piecing so these are these top three I really like the fact they're giving you these options I think it's 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 makes you think about your fabric placement a little bit shows you how different they can look when you play around with your fabrics okay so this one's like really scrappy and everyone's different this one they've done opposite so it will give you a different look and then on the bottom row here these are just some ideas for if you want to um, do the pieced element um, and it, you've got like a pinwheel happening because this fabric is the same as that this one you've definitely got this diamond with like a, sh um, a sort of tonal shadow round this one they're all different basically they've really played around with them so that's what we're going to have a look at tonight so I've already cut out my, my pieces um, and I know I know we've done June Taylor a lot but I just thought it was worth going through this how to piece stuff before we apply it you know it's something a little bit different so um, it tells me on my instructions to cut piece one at seven by seven so I've done that I'm using flower farm I love these fabrics I think they'll make beautiful spring placemats so I've cut out my seven by seven and this is something you can do before you start sewing as well is actually kind of think about where your you know lay off some of your fabrics out you don't have to cut them you could just fold them and think all right okay that I don't like that color next to that I like this you audition your fabrics um hi Sue you're gonna watch later think the weather's playing havoc with the signal uh, plus have it have decided to go on the internet at the same time oh just make matters with it. I know the weather is horrendous isn't it darling catch up soon my darling we'll we'll see you soon uh, pieces two to five so so far basic June Taylor two to five I'm going to cut two four and three quarter inch squares which I've then cut in half diagonally okay so four and three quarters and then just cut them in half diagonally and those are going to end up being on here like that so we're going to do there and there and then those two there like that okay so so far I've kind of framed that centre section you could use a nice big print in here because you've got a nice seven by seven piece, but I actually quite look like the ditzes on this. So I've gone with ditzy. And then because I want to do the piece in, it tells me on the instructions, I need, an, I need four five and three quarter squares and we're going to cut these in half diagonally as well. So I'm going to do each side the same. So I've done two and two, but you could have four completely different ones if you wanted to, or you could have you know, um, <clears throat> you could you know mix and match them, have them all, you know, you could actually have eight, cut them in half and use one half for this and then another half for another one, okay? But I'm gonna stick with this. And then my last piece is this big long piece here, which I like, quite like this, because it gives you a nice bit to put your knife and fork on and the placemat looks lovely. If you're dressing your table, put your knife and fork in a nice little napkin fold, Gla you know, glass for your wine or, or gin, gin and tonic there and you can see the rest of the placemat, which I like. Um, so then my last little piece which is 10 is a five and a half by 14 and I am using sort of a bigger I'm going to use a bigger print on that one these are like I said all the flower um, flower farm ones by Moda they're on the website so before we start sewing as always we're going to put our backing fabric on and I'm going with that big print on the back because my placemats are reversible then this still looks beautiful <laughs> if there's a spillage and I want to whip the placemat over this still looks really nice and it will tie in with the others so fold back my fabric halfway give my basting spray a quick spritz there we go like that so if you don't have basting spray you could if you wanted to tack this all in you know, or, or with safety pins, just as long as you're not hitting any of the lines, you could do. But we, we've got the basting spray, we've got the June Taylor and the 505. So on the website, we can get that out to you. But it's, um, it's good stuff, like it. There we go. So back in on first, same as ever. You know, there is nothing stopping you, maybe doing like a mile a minute or something. You could do that anything on the back you could make these completely reversible if you wanted to um 
you know, or jelly roll strips. If you've got like old jelly roll strips and stuff, you know, sew them into strips and use that on the back. Anything you like, really. It doesn't have to be one piece of fabric. If you want them completely reversible, play around with it. So back to the beginning and we're going to do some basic June tailoring to start with. As you all know, blue lines are placement lines, okay? So my first square, which is that seven by seven, is going in like that. And we are going to use pins, okay? So pin on just either side like that just for now, just to hold that one down. You could do a little spritz of fabric, you know, this basting spray if you want in the center. It's not really needed though. It's number one, number two is gonna go over here. Now, I also like that they've added in, now they're not all, they, they didn't used to do this, but it's something they've done recently. Can you see these little like butterfly marks here? This is to make sure that this is central. So when I put, cause this is gonna end up here. So I wanna put them right sides together. It's very easy to get them in the wrong place. But if you do this like that, it actually, you, your point of your triangle is going to sit right in that point there. So you know it's in the right place. I like the addition of these. I think it's something they've done recently, which I think really, really helps. Okay. And because I don't want to go flip backwards and forwards too much, I'm also going to put on number three. I've got more than enough space so I can. So number three is going to go right sides together. And again, I'm just going to use those little lines as a guide and pin that one down as well. And then we're going to go over to the machine, standard June Taylor. We're going to do this centre section and then I'm going to show you the pieced bit, okay? It's very easy piecing, very, very easy piecing. Um, Jean, you forgot who you were on tonight. Yeah, said Jean's been uh, been off the last couple of days and uh, so it was easier for me to do seven o'clock rather than one o'clock so than try, you know, try and find someone to cover the shop. Lindy Lou's busy on a Wednesday, so she did come and give me a hand this afternoon though, which was really nice. Um, so we're going to stitch across here and we're going to start now you don't really want to go over these blue lines here so this is a bit like foundation piecing we were doing yesterday okay so I'm going to start here and going to stitch across like that quarter of an inch and the same there so I think I've managed to get the, mach the buttons back the right way round hopefully I'm over here now <laughs> now I don't use a quarter inch foot with um, June Taylor because the blade gets stuck in the wadding and it just makes everything a mess. So I like to put my normal foot on and move my needle across. On my machine that's 5.5 okay. I also take my stitch length up to three because I'm going through wadding. I don't want like normal quilting which would be like three and a half four but you do want to make it easy on yourself. So as we always do grab that top thread, drop my needle in, needle back up and pull up that top thread okay pull up the bob, bob bobbin thread sorry just so that I don't get any nasty knots underneath okay and then needle back in and I can lock stitch and I would lock stitch on these okay and this is going to be very like you could put your walking foot on if you wanted to you know that works well with June Taylor okay just making sure things don't move as I go Go a weeny bit slower than you normally would on this and stop there okay so how have you all been are you all keeping warm because i'm not frankly <laughs> are you all okay is every anybody got anything interesting to tell me we are um we're super busy in the shop we really are Ooh, wrong button <laughs> press the wrong button there we go lock stitch i didn't bring the thread through oh well never mind i'll deal with that later um just trying to get ready for crank craft next week and then we're going straight into that counter sale um on the saturday and then we're off to the retreat on the sunday so it's ridiculous the amount we've got to get sorted out it really is so stitch down both sides we're going to go back over to the overhead there we go like that pins out and then just finger press that out if you've got a seam wand i can't i don't know where mine's gone i wonder if it's in that bag two seconds um let me just see if my seam wand aha it is uh 10 sleep still the treat i know it's not long darling i can't wait to see you all so magic seam wands love them they're really really good for this reason because you don't want to put an iron on the wadding it stretches not until you've finished piecing Okay, so this gives you a really, you can just, you can if you want to, 
because these are hardwood put your iron on there like that you won't burn it get a bit of heat into the wood and pull that down and it's like ironing it but you won't stretch the wad in and you get this beautiful I don't know if you can see it on camera oh my god can you hear the noise I don't know if I'm quiet a second can you hear that it's like the window's going to come in um, but the heat just gives you this really beautiful, neat, neat, crisp edge. Same with that one. You can see that I'm hitting the blue line. So the same with this side. Okay, just press down. Just, you know, it's not a, not a huge amount of heat. They're really nice. They feel nice in your hand as well. You can, you know, give that a really good... This would be good for foundation piecing like we were doing last night as well. Talking of foundation piecing, um, I've put the... Um, pattern on the, that template online now I got it on today so that's on so number four and five are going on again I'm looking for those little butterfly points to make sure my triangles are in the right place so there we go that one and I mean the joy of June Taylor is how quick it is it, it'll take you longer to bind it than it will to actually make it there we go I'm gonna stitch down those two uh, let me go over there. Uh, Jean, you've got seven sleeps before you leave on the way to the retreat. Oh, amazing. Oh, what are you doing, Jean? Are you doing, are you doing some stops and stuff on the way? What, what's happening? So, oh, I've done it again. Oh, it's because I'm talking. I'm not thinking about bringing my bobbin thread up. So, all the way down we go. Support, I mean, put, I haven't put my table on, but put your table on or support the weight here as you're doing this. You'll find it drags less. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And I'm aiming for where that spot is there. I don't know if that's close enough. Um, I, I don't know if I'm too close for you to see what I was doing, but I was just supporting this bit here as it went through and it just stops it dragging quite so much. Because sometimes it can drag a bit with uh, these. Okay, lock stitch. So, anybody else got any any news? What have you all been up to? Has anybody done anything fun? Have you made done any sewing over the last couple of days? Is anybody, you know, done anything non-sewing related? Talk to me. Yeah. Share, share your lives, lovelies. What have you been up to? way down there and there we go I'm done okay back over we come so back over here and that is the first little bit done how quick is that so out we go again and again just you can use your seam wand or a seam roller if you've got a seam roller if that's what you prefer to use just press that out so that's really nice and crisp and lovely. I'm going to stick some pins in there just to hold that where I want it to be. Uh, and then, oh, I'm a little bit worried about my sister. She's coming down tonight because she's got a um, study. She's a, a sister, an ICU sister. She's got a study day tomorrow. And so she's coming down. So we're having scout and everything overnight uh, uh, during the day for her. But coming over that bridge is going to be a little bit scary with these winds. I hope she's going to be all right. So I'm just going to flip over. And I don't know if you can see it, but you've got your quilting already done there as well. OK. Right. So now we're going to do the pieced bits. Oh, I've got this upside down. So you've got, can you see you've got dotty lines here on this? That means that you're going to, if you want to, you can piece this element before you attach it. All right. You could just put a big triangle in there. That would be absolutely fine. It's just like a square and a square and a square then. But we've got that dotty line, which is indicating that there's a pieced element. So I'm going to put this aside a moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the pieced element. So we've got these little squares. Oh, don't know what's going on. Sean or Sarah texting me. Um, Claire, you had a lovely weekend in Dartmoor for Easter and working on a coronation cal. Oh, lovely. Lovely, lovely. Oh, I'm, Jean, I miss what you're saying. You're, you're breaking up the journey two nights in Swindon to visit family. Lush. Nice. Uh, Taryn, you, Anne and, you and Anne had a sewing day Monday. Lovely. And you finally put your borders on the jelly roll quilt you started in November retreat. Ah, <laughs> oh, Lush. And that is 
craft club's doing a display in the village church for the coronation. You're in charge of making bunting. So trying to decide which fabrics to use. Oh, lovely. So I'm going to just line these up. So I've got all four there. So it's like you've all been having a lush few days. Really nice few days. So I'm going to stitch down, uh, stitch down. I'm going to cut down these in half because that's what the pattern's told me to do. There we go. So I've got four in that lovely pink. There we go, like that. And then I've got four in the rosebud now. No, I haven't because that didn't cut part because even though that's a new blade, it's already got a nick in it, which is really annoying. So I'm going to go back to my um, little thing here and it does tell you, you're going to do your pre-piece in like this. So really nice and easy. Now, if I want them to be all the same, okay, I want to make sure that my one fabric is always on the bottom and I'm going to put these right sides together. So I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm going to stitch. Now you're not going to make half square triangles. You're not going down the long edge. You're going down one of the short edges. Okay, so you're going to do quarter inch on the short edge. We're going to do that on all of them. So I want all of those on the bottom and then I know that I'll do them the right way. And then these are going on top. So it's very simple piece in, but it's something that they've not really, they've done it a little bit, but not a lot before where you piece stuff before you put it on. But it just gives you the option to do some different elements. Um, you made the seminal cushion over Easter. Ah, oh, lovely. Ah, oh, fantastic. Oh, I'd like to see that. Hilary, you're currently sewing June Taylor hopscotch and using the walking foot width. Um, quarter inch. Ah, oh, fabulous. Width to seven on your... Oh, wow. Oh, on your walking foot. Yes, it will differ on my normal foot. Yeah. Um, but that's good to know, actually, Hilary. For those of you... Oh, me saying use a, a walking foot. Um good to know what the width is thank you so I'm going to stitch down on the same bit both sides just two seconds I'm going to Bella Josh can you put the extraction fan on love it's getting really smoky in here it's all right Josh is cooking tea but he's obviously grilling or something and it's getting really smoky <laughs> so because I've got my quarter inch on uh, my foot set at a quarter inch I'm not going to swap it over I'm just going to be careful and I'm just going to really concentrate on keeping edge of the foot, uh, fabric on the edge of the foot. There we go, that's one. And you can see as well I've turned it so that I'm going flat edge in rather than the, um, the point because the point can then get caught. There we go, up that side. And then and this one. Nearly there. Last one. Um, I think I've missed a few comments, guys. I wasn't wasn't reading fast enough for you uh, commenting. <laughs> but I hope you all had a lush weekend anyway. There we go. We've got quite a few bank holidays coming up, haven't we, as well? We've got an extra one with uh, with um, the coronation as well. So, uh, of course, the coronation is also known as Sarah Jane's birthday. <laughs> so, um, there we go. Grab those over here like that done all those down the same side and again you can use your seam wand if you want to just to press these open it doesn't matter which way you press them you can just press them open with your seam wand or you can iron them it really doesn't matter okay so either way gets them nice and flat but yeah coronation day is is of course actually not coronation day it's sir jane's birthday which is far more important although i'm quite looking forward to the coronation you know it's Something that we're you know, probably not going to see again in our lifetime. Oh, well, I, we might do, I suppose. Depends on how long Charlie lasts, uh, which sounds awful, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, what's that? You've been making HRT not using the fa fabric from this month's subscription box. Ah, oh, lovely. Um, Nikki, you've nearly finished your tuffet and you've made the Peggy bag lush. Uh, and Jean, you've sewn the tuffet panels together and got the hubby to help you get the top on the tuffet. You couldn't pull hard enough. I know it is, it is almost a two man job that, isn't it? So made those and now once they're made, I can add them onto the placemat. So again, you've got these little markings. So you're gonna just treat this like one piece of fabric. So we're gonna turn that over, right sides together, line that up like that. And this little piece line here should kind of be in line with the seam as well. Okay, that does help kind of keep everything nice and square. I'm going to take the pin out from under there and pin in that side. 
There we go. Make sure that one's lined up. Pin out from there. Put a pin in that side. And then I'm going to do number seven as well. Save me flipping backwards and forwards too much on the screen. So again, line those up. And if I've done it right, which it looks like I have, that is all sort of following in line. There we go. It's one there. And... I think with the with the June Taylor as well, the joy of this is that everybody's will look completely different depending on what fabric she use. Um, so there we go, there to there. Um, so Jean, I'm impressed that you've got you've done your. Oh, hang on, there we go, that one. Impressed that you've done it yourself. I thought you were going to bring it to the tough it, uh, to the retreat with you, and we were going to do it. But amazing if you've uh, you've got it that far. That's fantastic. Um, if you have finished it, let's see pictures, please. Um, there we go. So we're going to go down like that. And I'm just going a little bit slower now just because it's a longer seam. So I'm just being extra careful to try and keep all of it nicely in line. Oh, oh see, just as I did that, my foot slipped and I went fast and I've messed the seam up. But never mind. It's not going to show underneath. Okay, that's walked a little bit. So just make sure that that is. So what I'm doing, just pushing that back out to hit, re reach the blue line. And holding it down. There we go. And then flip it round. And we can do the other side. And then it's almost done. You know, this is a real I mean, if I wasn't blathering on, I think it would take you maybe 15, possibly 20 minutes, if that, to do the whole whole placemat. You know, this if you were making a present or something. Uh, you still need to make the button and finish the bottom. Ah, oh, fair enough, lovely. Um, well, you can always bring it to the retreat if you want to, but we can help you finish that off. So, it's been lovely actually seeing... Actually, I think we've got people coming in. Anna, you, Anna and Taryn, I don't know who's coming in. Somebody's coming in tomorrow to finish their tuffet. I know we've got two tomorrow and two on Friday, I believe. In fact, I better text Sarah, remind her to put the stuff in the car. She's been off for two days, so her brain will, will be in work mode. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to push that one out like that. We're going to put a pin up there. And it's quite nice because that line is following the corner. It did work nicely. All those extra little guidelines really do help. They really do help. There we go. Put a pin in that one there. So we've got that happening. And then we're going to put the next two on, which are seven and eight. So again... Just make sure that that's all lined up. That's moved slightly, but I'd rather have that hanging out and make sure that I'm hitting the fabric right. Don't worry if you get little excess bits. Can you? See, I don't know if you can see, guys, where, how far away the camera is. I've got a little bit of excess here, which this fabric's just stretched a tiny bit. But as long as I'm keeping this piece in line with the blue line, so I'm kind of imagining where the blue line is and making sure it's right here, that's better And have, rather than come in you know doing it up to here and then it not meeting over here okay have that little bit of excess if necessary and then last one over here so like that like that that's all nice and lined up there we go so yeah so i'm just this is just you've seen got this bit now you guys have seen me doing loads haven't you but uh uh you're there tomorrow amazing i knew i knew i'd we had two tomorrow and then two on Friday. I couldn't remember which way around they were lovely. It'll be lush to see you, Anne. I'll get the coffee on, okay? <laughs> there we go. Uh, Nikki, you've done the button and lucky you've got a friend with an upholstery who came to help you fit the panels on. Oh, amazing. Please do show us your pictures when you finish them. Please, please post them. It was such a shame we couldn't get them finished at the time. It was just one of those things. Not sure why with it. It was the mount we had in the past. But you all did brilliantly, really, really brilliantly. So uh, I think we're probably going to run it as a two-dayer next time, um, just so that we've got um, we've got a little bit more time. Um, we're thinking about maybe doing it like almost like a mini retreat where we do it in a hotel, so we can do accommodation for people who want to come from afar. Um, but we're we're working on that. It's one of one of the little plans, working on on some weekend workshops, so you can come for the weekend, but do them in a, a hotel so we've got accommodation and food and all sorted um, probably not this year i'll be ready for next year but it is in the pipeline <laughs> it's all in the pipeline got lots in the pipeline 
I'm trying to keep you guys occupied. That's what it is. <laughs> there we go. Pins out and then press that out as well. Now, because I've got a lot of fabric there, I am actually going to... Oh, am I over here? Hopefully I am. I'm just going to give it a very gentle press. Okay. Just give that a really, really gentle press because I'm not touching the wad in now. I'm just touching the fabric. I can press that bit out. Okay, pin into there as well. Make sure that that's all in where I want it to be. And here. What time is it? Oh, I've been blathering on for ages, haven't I? And then this one is going to go here, okay, which is just there. So, again, they've given us little guidelines. Can you see where it overhangs just here? That's showing me where my, my blue line should be. So if that's a little bit big, it doesn't matter. And I've also got it here. So I'm going to lie this one on here to make sure that it's just lining up there. I'm double checking there as well, lining up there. Ignore this bit. I'm going to use this as my edge, okay, because it doesn't matter if it's stretched a little bit. It's going to happen. It's fabric. It's going to stretch a little bit. The lines are never going to stay perfect, perfect. So just, you know, think about... How you doing? I'm also can see because with this blue line that this bottom line is running nice and parallel, so I know that that's straight. So pin in there. I'm gonna take that one out from under there because it's catching. I thought I think I saw um, an advert earlier that was um, that so and B was coming back soon. So um, uh, what's that, Eileen? Uh, please say you're still off a of retreat. Oh, of course we will, my darling. Absolutely. Bring your tuffet along. We will absolutely help you finish it off. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, bring it along, lovely. No problem at all. Um, hi, Karen. How are you, lovely? Oh, don't worry about being late, love. You can catch up anytime. Anytime at all. So, there we go, like that. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty block, isn't it? It's one of the new June Taylor ones, Karen. Um, it's a placemat, but... There's no reason these couldn't be blocks in a quilt. Big blocks in a quilt. Once I've done this one, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going all the way down there. I'm really concentrating on keeping that. I'm using the top fabric because I know that that's in line with the blue line. And there we go. So take that pin out because it's moved just a little bit. If you think about it, you've got one, two, three, you've got four layers of fabric there. It, they are going to move against each other. So, you know, be kind to yourselves. Think about readjusting and stuff. Um, Natalie, you've seen somewhere that it's starting next Wednesday, but could be wrong. I need to, um, yeah, I need to have a little look. I'm sure somebody said, oh, someone bees back. So, there we go. That's that there. <coughs> and that's the last little bit. All done. So, back over to the overhead and pin out and over we go okay you can see that that now fits in beautiful oh, that oh, i'm even impressed myself there that literally is spot on it's not like me i tend to fudge it a bit you know i'm a bit slapdash at times give that a nice little press okay you could now that's that's enough you've done all your quilting as you've done as you've been piecing okay that's enough you can of course at this point then add in um, any extra quilting. So you could go in and quilt into these triangles if you wanted to. You don't need to, but you could if you wanted to. I think the weather is really playing up with the Wi-Fi today, guys. It does keep um, messing around. Um, Sandra, is this June Taylor Quilt to go? It is lovely. It's a brand new one. It's um, I'm taking them on to Crane Craft next week, but we will have them in the shop as well. Um, it's a brand new placemat. Um, but there is no reason at all why these couldn't be beautiful blocks. They'd be really interesting blocks. So done as is, but you can absolutely, if you're feeling brave, you could you could do some plique in there or you could do a bit of free motion in there if you wanted to. They're nice and small enough for you to have a little practice on. You know, shadow quilts, little triangles into here and really emph emphasise those diamonds and stuff. Play around with it, love, okay? You could, if you wanted to, you could have made a pocket on here. If I'd have done a piece of fabric, I just grab, this is not the right size, but if I'd have done a piece of fabric like that, folded over, imagine it was longer, okay? And sandwiched that between this, 
okay so if I had to put that like in between these two so it was sewn in you could flip it over like that and you'd have a lovely little pocket you could put a napkin or something in if you wanted to so you can definitely play around with this all right um at this point nice thing about now this now is we can now trim this up and again you've got these guidelines which help you trim everything up so we're going to do that now because i've got time for a change instead of rushing back to the shop we can actually do this so i've got my ruler can you see i don't know if you can see guys actually let me do that can you see i've got these lines extending out on the wadding here and here now unfortunately because the fact the camera now is on the wall i can't make it go higher but i've got my ruler lined up on those blue lines and i can trim it down it means that you're it's going to be really nice and square okay i can do the same on this one so that blue line there that blue line there like that all the way around and trim these down now yes these are supposed to be placemats and they are beautiful placemats i think they're stunning really really pretty i love this flower farm fabric as well but you don't have to use them as placemats okay like that let me just trim all that off okay placemat done apart from a binding and i'm gonna use oh i will in a moment i'm gonna use this uh the the red spot from the if i just do that like that the red spot i'm just going to do a standard two and two and a half inch binding all the way around okay and then we should probably machine it on as well for quickness because you know it's a placemat it's not an heirloom quilt um it seems to be a slight delay in viewing i think so lovely it's um it's the weather's crazy here it really is so i think that's affecting my wi-fi as well so i'm going to do a little red and white polka dot because it picks up this polka dot here as the um as the binding but you could absolutely make this into a quilt you could do the same again and you could then just use them you know our usual sash, um quilts you go you know with the one inch on the front and the two and a half inch on the back um method to join these or you could use the sash in a dash that we've got there's um i probably what could, i'd probably go with the taupe maybe i think the white would be a bit harsh because this is more of an ivory and this is a pale pink but yeah i'd probably go with the taupe color maybe would look quite nice the camely color one with it i think that would be quite soft and you could join them but you can just use the standard quote as you go method and this would end up looking like sashing then if you imagine this block was then over here this would look like big pieces of sashing um they come out at a good size what size is that that's come out yeah 19 by 14 so you know four of them is going to make a beautiful baby play mat if you wanted to you know that would be perfect for a play mat size you know use i spy fabrics and stuff and things so it can be used to play games and all with two packs would easily make a beautiful beautiful lap quilt um so yeah nice and nice and easy really really fast to do i love the fact they've played around with these a little bit to give you a a little bit more if you're a little bit more experienced you're a bit more you know i don't just want to do plain and simple you've got a little bit of piece in here you know play around with it um so that's it my darlings um I, has anyone, got, anybody got any questions anybody got anything they want to say um i'm i think tea's ready i can smell it cooking it smells amazing i think he's doing bubbling squeak and sausages love bubbling squeaks my fave um seems to be a slight today in viewing um maybe servers or us have you've had eight hours of load shedding dear i don't know what load shedding is karen what's that is that when they turn off like all your electrics and everything so to save energy and all i don't know karen mm, gosh that's quite a long time isn't it to be without without stuff so what's hand sewing <laughs> um so yeah um so i'm gonna do we've got the, this pack and the other packs on crate and craft next week um but we will have them on our own website as well i think they're really really pretty really really like these and there's lots of scope to play around with them as well um there is one that's got a, one that says done surprise surprise in a rainbow which is flying geese so you can do your flying geese and then add on um and then there's one that Anne, the lovely Anne's made for us which is called brighton pier which is really simple it's just strips of fabric but it gives you loads of scope for a big floor of oh 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 i don't know what's happened i don't know i think my wi-fi is definitely going so anyway 
I will see you. Sarah's back tomorrow. And um, yeah, I think it's the weather is playing absolute havoc with everything because <laughs> um, all of that just completely dropped out. Um, I will see you next week. Sarah will be back tomorrow at one o'clock, back to the daytime. Okay. Um, I'll see you really soon. Take care, my lovelies. Bye. <laughs>